Hi, hi, this is JJ Gat. Welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to share with you my experiences as a Twitter Spaces beta user compared to a Clubhouse super host, which I think I am. And um, that is from my experience of being asked to be one of the 6,000 or so currently people selected out of 240 million Twitter users to test out their new audio only app functionality of their platform, which is a social media platform, and it's comparable to Clubhouse, which is has been existing and running since like last March or so. And beta testing for Twitter spaces just started in December, and they're rolling it out to a small number of creators, small number of users, just testing out, and we're giving them feedback, and we're helping them build out an app similar to what we who are in Clubhouse are doing for the Clubhouse founders. We're testing it out. We're testing out their things. We're like essentially guinea pigs for both platforms. So here is one of the few YouTube videos on YouTube right now where I'm giving you the real hand experiences as an actual Twitter beta user, beta tester, and an actual Clubhouse beta tester. And I'm also was one of the first people to beta test to Pinterest. So I am the super beta tester. So anyway, so here you go. I'm gonna share with you first, I'm gonna share with you the similarities between the two. Then I'm gonna tell you about the pros of one versus the pros of the other, and then the cons of one versus the cons of the others. So stay tuned for that after this intro. Hey, also I want you to stay tuned to the end. There's some updates regarding Clubhouse and Twitter Spaces that just happened um, after I recorded the bulk of this video. So you're gonna see the updates. Stay tuned, they're at the very end of this video. Don't skip ahead, watch the whole video. JJ Dad, welcome back to my channel. Okay, now that's corny. Let's try something else. To my channel. First, for the similarities, they both are audio only. A second similarity is they both have speakers and listeners. A third similarity is that usually the person who starts the club in the clubhouse is on the upper left corner. The person who starts the room in Clubhouse is in the upper left corner. And the person who starts or is the host of the Twitter spaces is also in the upper left corner when you're looking at the app. A fourth similarity is they both have speakers. In Clubhouse, the speakers can include co-moderators and they're indicated as being co-moderators by having a green asterisk, which we euphemistically call a green beam in Twitter spaces, there is no other indicator that a person is a co-moderator. So everyone's a speaker who's on stage. So in Clubhouse, you have speakers and there is um, no max of the number of speakers. This is a similarity still. In Twitter spaces, there is a max of 10 speakers plus the host. In both platforms, it's the intent of the apps that whoever is the host or the co-moderators in Clubhouse case and just the host in Twitter Spaces case controls the room. And what they have is what's called moderation tools. They're allowed to bring people up from the audience and Twitter Spaces, you give people ability to speak if they're on stage or stay down as a, as a listener. In Clubhouse, you can bring people up from the stage and mute their mics if they you don't want them to speak anymore or take them back down to the audience. Both have the ability to close the room. However, in Twitter spaces, the only person that can close the room or start a room is the host. In Clubhouse, anyone who is a moderator have the ability to start a room or to close the room. Now I'm gonna get into why that's an issue later on for the Twitter Spaces case. Um, in both apps, you can schedule events. Um, Twitter Spaces hasn't rolled out that yet before, but we've watching for all, those of us who are beta testers are watching it and waiting for that to come out. In Clubhouse, you can schedule out events in advance so someone can know what's on the calendar and people can actually monitor an event and know and be alerted when an event starts. So that's the case for both of them. Um, well, not for Twitter Spaces yet because they're still working on that. 
what else do I have? Okay, and so also you'll notice on both of them, the, the interfaces look similar where you have the speakers on top and then you have the listeners at the bottom. In Clubhouse, there's a second row um, that includes the people who the speakers or the moderators or the hosts who started it are following. They're on the second row. There's a little hierarchy and everyone else is others in the room. In Twitter spaces, below the speakers, there's everyone else is just a listener. Um, there's a hierarchy, not known, but there's believe that it's the people who the who the moderator follows you know who follows the moderator 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 follows as well so mutual follows and then underneath them are the people with the verified twitter badges so verified users come second and then everyone else so there is a hierarchy in twitter space as well so they both have certain hierarchies of their stages so those are the similarities of the two now the pros of clubhouse over twitter spaces so for clubhouse you have clubs twitter spaces is still new they haven't built out clubs yet so you have have different interest groups or interest communities that you can actually apply for and become a member of the club. I personally am a co-founder of the Rising YouTuber Club, which is a club for YouTubers with zero to 10,000 followers. So if you are a YouTuber and you're on Clubhouse, I'd like to invite you to join our club. And second thing that's beneficial of Clubhouse is that the person who starts the room cannot start the room right away. Any one of the co-moderators can start the room. And if the moderator has to leave sometime, the, the person who starts the room, the host has to leave and take a meeting or go away. The room can continue um, even though that host who started it is no longer in, they can come right back. So that's a benefit. Another, Another benefit of Clubhouse is that you can actually search members right now. You can you know type in a name and know and find out if someone is actually already on the app. Uh, another benefit is that you will know what your room is about um, from outside. So if you're in Clubhouse and you're scrolling through what's called the hallway, you can see the title of the room and know whether or not you want to go in there and explore more. So those are the benefits of Clubhouse. So now let's talk about that's something that Clubhouse has that Twitter Spaces does not have yet. So let's talk about things that Twitter Spaces has that Clubhouse doesn't have next. Okay, so now let's talk about the benefits of Twitter Spaces over Clubhouse. So Twitter Spaces has a superior quality sound. One of the first things you're gonna notice, especially if you're a sound person or you're a musician or you deal with sound, is the audio quality is tops. It's on a different protocol than the protocol that was your phone. I think Clubhouse shares the same audio protocol with your phone. And so sometimes when you're in Clubhouse, it seems kind of muffled, but on Twitter spaces, there's lots of clarity. I'm not quite sure what's the purpose of that, but there I've heard that because the Twitter spaces is built on the old Periscope platform, on the Periscope infrastructure, Periscope is no longer existing. I don't believe so. I think sometime as recently as this week, they told everyone that you're not gonna be able to access Periscope any longer. Um, and perhaps because Twitter also is a larger web well entrenched, you know, well endowed, heavily capitalized, you know, lots of employees company um, with lots of infrastructure, lots of, you know, support and resources that they were able to build a platform that has superior audio. So that's the first thing that Twitter Spaces have over at Clubhouse. The second thing that you notice the difference between Twitter Spaces is Twitter Spaces has a talk to text feature. So one of the things when you are a listener or whether you are a speaker, you can actually toggle on this button, which is the last one here that tells you you can have um, translation, transcriptions. So as I'm speaking on Twitter spaces, the, te the text is showing on the bottom of the screen. So that's great for the hearing impaired community or perhaps for someone who doesn't want to listen, who maybe is busy and they just want to read or they don't want people to know they're on so you can actually read what's being said. So that's the second benefit of Twitter spaces over, over, over uh, Clubhouse. A third benefit is that um, Clubhouse is limited to 5,000 people in a room at a time. However, Twitter spaces, perhaps because it's Twitter, because it's a larger platform because the platform it's built on maybe can accommodate it you can have up to a million listeners um the limits though which is different from clubhouse is that you can only have 10 speakers and one host and so the stages will not have a lot of people on there now some people may consider that a benefit because some people who don't like large stages may like the fact that only 10 people can speak on um, the people who don't like that may be like well what about the 11th person what if someone comes in a room that's amazing then that means someone's gonna have to go back down to the listener spot and so someone's always gonna have to be demoted down to accommodate someone else and so that could be sort of tricky so that may be a negative or a plus but depending on where you stand on that you might consider that a great that you won't have large crowded stages um, now a 
Fourth benefit is that, or this could be a negative as well, but it's a difference. One thing that they have, there's no mic. So in Clubhouse, for example, everyone who is on the stage speaking has a little mic. And so when someone's mic is unmuted, that's a visual signal like, oh, you've unmuted your mic. You'd like something to say. What would you like to say? Also, when the mic is mute, you know people are quiet or you know someone's mic is unmuted. That's a visual stimulation or visual, visual cue to the host or the moderators that someone's mic is unmuted. You can tell them, oh, mute your mic or something like that. On Twitter spaces, there is no mic indicator. So some people say that's a positive because you can, anyone can join in the conversation. And so therefore the conversation tone on Twitter spaces, some people have said has been more natural, like a natural flow. If you're conversing, sometimes people interrupt one another. And some people stop, stop by, um, will pause and make room for someone else to speak because you don't know if someone's mic is muted or not. And so anyone could just jump in. So some people might not like that because they may want to be, have the ability to control, for example, and have visual cues when someone else is speaking and have a more controlled room. So that could be a positive or negative depending on how you look at the, the, the aspect of conversational versus non-conversational, more instructional sort of. So that is a fourth uh, different. Uh, fifth difference is the uh, ways. Okay, so in Clubhouse, the only people that can indicate that they're happy that they speak what their speaker is saying and indicate applause is through flicking your mic off and on and flicking on. That's the sign for applause and that's it. And you have to be on stage to be able to have that ability. So in Twitter spaces, anyone, whether you're a speaker on stage or whether you are a listener, have six emojis. So it's the 100% emoji right now. It's the hand raising emoji. So if you're speaking and you don't want to speak out of turn, you can raise your hand and signal it with it. There is the fist bump, like yeah, old man emoji. There's a peace, like peace out or cool. Or, and then there's also the laughing emoji. Um, I think that's the six. I'm not quite sure if I'm missing one. But anyway, so those are the different emojis that you can show. And you can actually uh, uh, toggle this based on your skin tone. So if you want a yellow, you could be white, pale, light brown, tan, dark, whatever you want. You can change the color of your hand on the emoji. So that is a um, fifth differentiator, a sixth differentiator. Okay. So you cannot, um, this is a differentiator. I'm not necessarily it's a positive, but you can't search people. So one of the ways you search on Twitter, who is a, is a Twitter right now, who's a beta tester of the Twitter spaces as a, we, the community of beta testers of 6,000 or so have decided to put a little purple, which is the, the emoji or the app or the icon for Twitter spaces is a purple square, I think, or a purple circle. I'm not quite sure. But those of us, and I think it came up, Mr. Dre said he's the one who came up with the concept of everyone who is a beta tester to put the purple circle in front of their name on Twitter. So everyone knows in the community, knows that they are a host. And then also, if you want to search for a host, or the only way you can see a space now, you have to either one, be following summer, someone who was a beta tester, or two, um, be uh, someone you do follow could, has to be in a room of a beta tester. Or uh, three, you have to get a link. So those are only three ways right now you can see a Twitter space. So unlike Clubhouse, where you can see anyone in, in the room if you are in Clubhouse app. So all you have to do is join the app. And once you join the app, you can see everything and everyone. Twitter spaces, because it doesn't have that sort of similar thing, you can only see those three ways. And I've been using the analogy. It's like a, a town versus a city, apartment building in the city. Whereas with Clubhouse, it's like a little town and your home is open and anyone's walking down the street can just come in your house if they want to but you're cozy I feel more secure inside of a house whereas Twitter spaces it's a busy street because Twitter has 240 million people so it's a larger space versus Clubhouse which is like a town of 6 million or this other one's a town of 250 million people which is a city so it's apartment building and the only people that know that a, a party is going on in the apartment building who can see the purple haze and that's how you see it's a purple haze above where the where the uh, fleets will go whoever is a Twitter Spaces host, you'll see the you see the 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 emitting purple. The only way you know a party is going on up there is that you have to either know, be following that person, or have someone you know in the party. So if you're walking down the street, you can only see the music banging that there's a party on there because you're oh someone I know is in that room or someone I follow is in that room. And then the other way is to know the code, have the link. So if you don't see, if you've got someone you follow or not someone you know in that room, and someone sends you the Twitter Spaces link through a DM or through some other format maybe to tweet it out or send it in a, wherever, wherever you want to send it to email, then you can get in that way. So if you're not following, so it's either you buzz it in like a code at the apartment building. So that's how I sort of differentiate the two. Um, anyways, I think that's the end of the similarities and differences between 
uh, Twitter spaces, you can have a million listeners join your room and hopefully the crash, the app won't crash because it's all also still in beta. The technology is still being developed. There's a woman named Maya Gold. She's the one who's building it. She's a phenomenal person. I'm so happy she's a sister. So yeah, so she's building it out and it's still, you know, tested in the works. But those are the bits and benefits of Twitter spaces that I can see right now as a beta tester, as someone who's actually hosted a few spaces and been in a few spaces since I started this week. So let's talk about um, the cons, maybe. So I'm going to talk about the cons for both of them. So the cons for both of them is that there is a, and this is an issue with any social media platform, but especially Twitter, which has a history of having toxicity and uh, vitriol and um, controversial topics and figures and people saying things and bullying. There's a lot of stuff that goes on on Twitter. Um, but in Trump House too, there's some elements of that. So both have elements of trolling. And so being able for the founders of the creator to monitor and keep a hold of that is really, really difficult. So that's a challenge for any social media platform. And I just found like with Twitter, perhaps it might be a little bit more of a problem because um, it's open to 240 million people, including all the characters. Now, right now, because it's still in beta, you, you eliminate that problem because if you're not following any trolls or trolls hopefully aren't following you, they won't see you. And right now you can't necessarily see Twitter spaces. Everyone can't see Twitter spaces. People could still monitor us and track us down with our circle. So that's the other thing about having that circle. This is the Twitter spaces side. Having that, having that circle in our bio actually makes us a target of trolls or maybe people from other countries or people from other that are trying to, uh, get that technology so we are susceptible to trolls more i think because twitter is so open whereas clubhouse is only closed to ios and only by invite only and people probably carefully curated who they invited so i feel there's more a little bit the cons there's trolling on both perhaps you might be more i feel more exposed a little bit on twitter spaces than clubhouse now so those are the uh, the cons now the cons of Twitter spaces is that one host like if which is what's all can also be a pro the fact that one host if one host, so I've been, I was, I started two rooms. I had a field trip from Clubhouse to Twitter Space this week and something was going on. There was a glitch. My app glitched twice. And when it glitched twice, it kicked me out. When it kicked me out, the entire room closed. So I had to go send the links and invite all those people in the room, another DM their link and they all, we had to reconvene. So imagine if you're doing a concert, if you're doing a listening party and something happens, you're the host and it closed down. That means all 1 million people have been listening. They no longer, concert is over for everyone. So I think there should be at least what you have one other person who's a beta tester they should be you should be allowed to have two people um keep the room open or you can pass the mic the way in clubhouse if you leave you're the host you created the room you can leave and pass it on now the one host thing is kind of good because one of the problems with clubhouse is that when you have very different moderators and if people just keep modding you bring up a couple moderators and everyone just mods everyone any moderator could shut down a room so on 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 twitter spaces only one person could shut that room that's the host so the twitter spaces that kind of eliminates that because only those other people who are speaking on stage don't have the ability to shut down a room but that could be a problem so i think the, the medium is to have two people to have the ability to be able to turn start a room and shut down a room so that is a con the I just wanted to add really quick that although that Twitter Spaces actually is in the works of adding co-moderators. So um, I don't know if that's a reaction to critiques or what, but yeah, just let you know that. Okay, another con of Clubhouse is that, which is just kind of con, like there's, because there's, it's only audio only, the only way you can see something is people swap out their profile pictures. So they may say pull to refresh. And when you pull to refresh your screen, you'll see someone has changed the profile picture. And you know, from the Lion King's experiment, uh, in, in theater performance and others in the past and others, you know, other theatrical sort of performances, creative performances on Clubhouse, that that's, it's been very, very creative use of the pull to, ref, pull to refresh sort of tactic of showing, visually showing something new on the screen. Now with Twitter spaces, you could actually actually tweet out something so I can tweet something and they can I can share that tweet so where I want to share the tweet I can share it on to another social media platform I can DM that tweet I can copy the link to tweet or now I can share the tweet to my space so if I'm already in a space or someone's in a space I can send someone anyone who's a speaker on stage can do this so the listeners can't do this I can send someone a, a tweet when you send a tweet to someone's space, it appears above. So that's great if you're doing instructions, you can say, you could put up their links to other um, 
other other websites you can put up images you can put up charts you can tweet lots of different things you have more leeway and it appears on the top now the culture is you don't do that unless you ask the host can i put something in your space above tweet something to your space that's the culture but so far anyone who's a speaker can put something on top so that allows more ability for instructions if you want to use that twitter spaces for that Okay, after I recorded the initial videos, I discovered a couple of things with both of the apps. New updates, okay? New updates. Uh, one, on March 5th, Clubhouse updated its app to say that you can now enhance the audio. Um, so if there's the app is throttling, if there's problems with it, if you're in a bad signal situation, you can put it to low audio. But if you, wanted to, if you want to um, share music, if you're recording, if you're doing theatrical production, you can now actually increase the audio. That's new because that was a differentiator before between Twitter Spaces and Clubhouse. So Clubhouse has responded to that by allowing better audio. So we'll see how that works. A second thing Clubhouse did and was a differentiator, differentiator between that and Twitter spaces was that you couldn't see audience reactions. So on Friday when we did our, our, our um, we did a, a field trip from Clubhouse to Twitter spaces with my sister, and when people were raising their hands, we could actually see the emoji. If someone had risen their hand, we can see on the profile on their picture in the audience that their hand was uh, had, had had been raised. So that is an emotion. So if they can do hand raise emoji on the app. Um, perhaps they can also have some sort of other indicator individually, the same way you can do it Twitter Spaces. So that's something new for Clubhouse. Now on the on the Twitter Spaces side, I already said that Twitter Spaces is coming soon, is the ability to schedule. And something new now, Twitter Spaces is actually going to have the ability to have co-hosts, um, which was something that they didn't have before and which was challenging. And the question to me is whether, you know, someone, a co-host should be able to start and end a room and the room shouldn't end because the co-host has to leave, wants to go, wants to dip out for a second. So it looks like Twitter Spaces is answering that and so they're responding. So they're getting more and more like one another. Actually, the differentiators, they're closing the gap on the differentiators and that's probably as a response to one another part of response to your community um also a response to competition that's the beauty when you have a monopoly you can do what you want you can be slow to roll out services because there's no one else it's just you once another person comes into the picture you have to quickly adapt and actually um compliment and give people what they want and respond because they people will not have choices and, and i'm sure clubhouse doesn't want to lose people to twitter spaces and twitter spaces does want to you know siphon off some clubhouse people with some differentiating functionality so there you have it. That's my last bit of piece of updates um, for this. All right. Okay, it's getting dark now. I lost all my sunlight because I got a call came through. So the final thing is of both both apps, you cannot record for privacy sake. And who knows if they're saving audios. I know Clubhouse says they only save it if there's if the room is reported. They only save it for investigation purposes. Otherwise, there's no recording of the apps. I don't know about that in Twitter. I haven't even looked at the terms of service, but I do know I tried to record a piece of the, uh, I've tried to record it um, from my phone and it, it record didn't go through. So they have the ability of actually blocking you from using your iPhone record functionality to even record it. With Clubhouse, you can record it and they'll just give this alert that says, hey, you're not supposed to be recording. And that's about it. But there's not, they don't stop you from recording. With Twitter spaces, you're not really not supposed to be recording and you can't record. So I think that's it. Those are the two similarities um, and the two things. I, for In terms of for w whether I like one or the other, I would just say that I do like um, I think for so the first time I did a Twitter spaces, I forgot I was in a space because it was like, a, maybe because it was a small intimate. We we're talking about all sorts of stuff, conversational. It felt more casual to me than Clubhouse seems more formula. I'm going to get on stage. I feel the need to keep people there because I can see them coming and leaving. And there's a pressure to like entertain or, or to, you know, to just educate and to keep people on and be instructional and keep the room flowing. It seems more pressure with Twitter spaces for me personally. I don't feel any, any feeling, any obligation. Maybe Twitter needs to put me in front of larger spaces, but I don't feel any larger any obligation to like to control a room. Perhaps even though I'm the only host, because oh, other people can other people can make emojis and other people can interact, and maybe that's the thing. So the, I'm seeing interactions. I'm seeing it's it's a lot of inter it's a lot of activity because I I can see the speakers and I can see the listeners reacting with the 
last sign, the 100 sign, so I can see interactions going on. So I know already the people are having a good time. So it's less pressure on whether or not my message is resonating because I can see the resonation from the audience, not just from the speakers. So maybe that's why Twitter Spaces to me seems more less pressure and then maybe less more conversational. But I do love Clubhouse. It's my jam. I'm, I'm a, cl a Clubhouse club club owner i host rooms in there i've drawn communities and i'm not going anywhere so i'm still loyal to clubhouse and then i think i can cut they can compliment one another if i just want to hop on a space or join a space it's different people it's a different vibe um and then as i learn more about tennis spaces i'll see other ways that people are using it and maybe join on or maybe create spaces similar to the way other people are using it i know i know clubhouse i'm intimately familiar i know the different ways you can you can use it for entertainment for education for just vibing for just chilling for just networking i know all the ways i know the ins and outs. i've been on there since december 15th or something like that where it's twitter spaces i just don't know the universe of possibilities yet um oh the other other thing the difference is is android twitter announced this week that they're allowing beta testers for android users or clubhouse said by june that's going to start opening up to android users so that's actually a big differentiator i should mention that um between the two um, is that one is open to Android already, the other one is not yet. And so I, when I did announce that on my, when I tweeted that, a few Android people was like, oh, this is the end of, t of Clubhouse. Clubhouse is going to be dead. I don't think so. I think Clubhouse will continue to thrive as a community. It's going to keep growing. Um, folks are happy with it. And I don't think Twitter Spaces is going to be a threat. I think it'll complement. It'll be different people. I can already tell the folks who are on Twitter Spaces, um, lively. It's maybe this is spaces that I've gone into. Uh, it's, 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 it's different, you know, community and types of people it's the same in clubhouse as well but i can tell um the android aspect of perhaps android skews younger i think android skewed international more so i think than just iphone so i think you'll have a bigger mix of different types of folks on twitter spaces than on clubhouse right now and i know that's the critique of clubhouse they say it's elitist um because it's only ios so um that is something just take that with a grain of salt and i'll leave it at that in terms of for my my opinion on the two so if you are a big Twitter Spaces beta tester and also on Clubhouse, I like to invite you to do your own video and share your experiences in your video and tag me in the video so I can come check it out. And if you have any questions about Spaces or you want me to do any follow-up video about Spaces as a beta tester, also put that in the comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you on my next video. This is JJ Gad. Thanks for coming to my Spaces versus Clubhouse review um on this channel and this channel is normally dedicated to pinterest marketing um social media marketing and pinterest marketing and so every once in a while i like to deviate and share something that i know about another platform and so today is for twitter space for the clubhouse so i hope you enjoy that i'll see you next time in my next video um and if you like this video i like to invite you to like it uh, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already a member of my j squad um, and uh, uh, hit that notification bell so t uh, YouTube will alert you every time I do a, a video. And I'll see you on the next time. Cue my outro music. How to join Twitter Spaces. First, find a Twitter Spaces beta host and join their space. When you're there, make sure you get on the stage and speak and say, hey, Twitter, i like to be a Twitter Spaces beta host. That might help. We don't know. Then there's a Google form that you can fill out. Make sure when you fill out this form, you say how you are going to make it an inclusive community. Twitter is trying to roll it out to communities that have been bullied on Twitter before. Then maybe that day or maybe a day or two, you'll get an alert saying you've been invited to join. Then when you go to make a tweet, you'll see this button press down and hold on it you're gonna get three options the first option is Twitter spaces hold down on that one and you're gonna first get the disclaimer saying that they may record it for security purposes but to try to keep the place safe got it good then you can actually send someone via DM a tweet or copy the link to your space and let them know to join you can also add a Twitter handle and add speakers that way then finally you can set your thing to everyone only people you follow or people who you invite to speak and then you can start your space enjoy but up, but up, boom.